Hello, Marky Dragonals. Knows Marcus Eikenberry in real life, and uh, as BitConnect fails, I am uh, changing some of my recommendation on Zookcoin. All right, so what we've got here is that Zootcoin is a lending platform. Uh, they're in the ICO right now. You can see here that I've got a few Zootcoins and, uh, and I've got some Bitcoin balance, which I have not uh, spent yet on more coins. So the reason that I wanted to do this follow-up video about their ICO is not because I don't like what I see here, but I do have a lot of concern, especially since BitConnect went literally belly up. And uh, so in their statement here that they have halted their uh, lending and exchange platform, which, you know, that is part of what Zootcoin is about. And this has always been an area, and I've, and I've mentioned this multiple times uh, in any of the videos that I've done covering these things, is that this is probably, Zootcoin is probably one of the highest risk uh, things that I've done in the cryptocurrency environment. And when I say high risk, it's because there's a lot of signs on it that say stuff like Ponzi scheme or whatnot. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of doubt about, about whether or not a lending platform can truly be something that is anything but a Ponzi scheme. And I do think it's possible, but I've got some red flags, especially with uh, BitConnect now. They have halted their exchange and, uh, and halted their lending. So with the exchange having, having uh, halted, um, I now have you know, I have these BCC, not to be, con not to be, uh, they call them BCC, uh, not to be confused with, uh, with Bitcoin Cash, which some platforms also list that as BCC. And so what we've got now is that I've got these coins that have dramatically dropped in value and... So I only had, now I had only had an initial invest, investment in here of 150 bucks. Uh, I, it's, it's how much Bitcoin was put in, but the, uh, I wasn't able, you have to do it in $10, had to do it in $10 increments. And I, I was at like, you know, 149 and change or something like that after everything was said and done. And so I ended up investing 140 and I, and I was just now starting to explore this stuff and, and I'm glad it was only 150 bucks in here because I had my reservations. There's so many people out there claiming scam, scam, scam. And, and I wanted to do this anyway. I wanted to get in here and learn what they were doing. And if, it's, if it was not a scam or if it's not a scam to you know benefit from that. But if it is, I want to learn from that. And so I've caught a lot of heat from people for even talking about this stuff. But the fact is, is that one of the ways to totally, you know, get a grasp on the whole market on everything is to, you know, do some of this stuff. Now, if this were illegal or if this were, you know, something that, you know, could get criminal charges or something like that, um, I don't really want to participate with that. So, but I couldn't see anything like that that said that unless it's an all out fraud. And so doing a lot of research, you know, it's just this big gray area. Now, part of why they said that they took the exchange offline and everything is that uh, DDoS attacks and then also the cease and desist letters that they received from two U.S. states. Now, really, they should have just told 
and, and this is not my opinion on what I would do if this were my company, but why didn't they just tell Texas and North Carolina to just fuck off? These guys are not located in the United States. Why should a foreign government or foreign entity have any power or control over them? It's just like I'm in the United States and, you know, uh, Australia says, we want you to change something. We don't like it. Or the UK says, we want you to change this. We don't like it or whatnot. I don't have to listen to that because we don't have operations in those countries. We sell to customers in those countries, but we don't have operations in those countries. If we had operations in those countries, it'd be way, way different. Maybe they do have US operations. I don't know. But it doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me that they use this excuse as the DDoS attacks the, and the two cease and desists from the two different states as the reason that they're taking all of this offline. You know, especially, when, weren't they in the middle of an ICO right now? You know, <clears throat> so basically that doesn't sit well with me. The other smoking gun here that, that make, gives me a lot of pause is that they took Cloudflare offline while the DDoS attacks were happening. And why would they do that? Cloudflare is there as a shield, as protection. And they removed that. They went to some different system, which meant that the DDoS attacks were not happening. And a couple days later, they say this stuff. I can see the DDoS attacks happening for a day. I could not see that Cloudflare would not be able to figure this out. Cloudflare, as far as I know, has figured out every DDoS attack and figured out how to stop them. And that's one of the things, that's why companies use them. But I don't, I don't get this one. So, okay, so that gives me a lot of pause on, on BitConnect. Now, in, in ZookCoin, I'm still participating in this. I'm still going forth and going to do the lending uh, program when it goes online and everything. And, uh, and you can see here, I've got quite a few coins. So now, but, but it, my recommendation changes a little bit given this big failure from, from BitConnect because only because they are the same type of system. And I have no proof that BitConnect was doing anything wrong. I have no proof that that they, you know, were Ponzi scheme or scam or there was any fraud there, whatever. And and so I don't know 100% what to think of that. I know that it looks bad. And and so that's part of why I want to change my recommendation on Zootcoin because it, it it worries me a little bit. Now I'm still going to continue forth and and work with Zootcoin and and do this stuff, um, but um, but I'm not thinking that at the moment that I'm going to recommend it in the same way that I have, and um, because because I have more doubt and and it might just be fud on my part, but I don't want to recommend things to people that are in fact. Um, I don't want to look in retrospect in a year from now or whatnot and have people having lost money because of, because of whatever on here. I'm not comfortable with that. And I'm sure any of you can understand that. So anyway, I've changed my recommendation to, to very high risk on this. And, and I'm not saying that you can't make some money with this. I'm not saying that, you know, it won't, um, that it is, you know, fraud or anything like that. And, but I do want to encourage. So there's one, there's one point that of what Zootcoin says is their, is their bread and butter, which is that they have a trade bot, which trades, uh, it makes trades and it then generates profits from those trades of cryptocurrency. And they're using your, um, your funding in there to do this and then you get an interest rate back, which I assume is, I, I mean, I don't know how much compared to what their bot is earning, but 
one of the things that, that I asked them for early on and um, that they weren't able to provide uh, or not willing to provide at the time or whatever is that I wanted proof that the trade bot actually is making money. And especially in an environment right now where Bitcoin has been going down incredibly. And so how can you not take losses on that given what is currently available in the market for how trades can work? All you can do is halt. And, and that may be part of the reason why BitConnect collapsed is because they needed Bitcoin to stay in an upward trend. So I'm sure that the Zootcoin guys, that it is very, very concerning to them that Bitcoin has failed or BitConnect has failed and that it, it, you know, that it leaves a stain on all of this. So anyway, I will continue to do some videos about this. I will let you know when the lending portion goes live and, and I will show you how well I'm doing or not doing in it. And if I'm successful with it, I'm gonna show that. If it fails and all blows up, I will show that as well. I'm not filtering this content. And so, in fact, I'm not filtering it so much that, that um, I'm not being paid by Zootcoin. Uh, they did talk to me before I made my first video, uh, asked me to give some coverage. They did offer to pay me and I told them no. Uh, I told them that I would make any earning, I would put some of my own money in and that I would make any earnings, you know, uh, beyond the interest that they pay based upon other people jumping in too and getting a referral from that. But I'm not, um, but I wanted to have the freedom to say whatever I felt was necessary about them, regardless of, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want the business relationship to be that formal. I wanted it to be um, to where I have full editorial control, let's say. And because I don't think that they, they're going to appreciate this video, but um, I just want to give it to you straight and honest. And, um, and when things change, I just, I just want to say that I think they've changed and uh, keep it out there nice and blunt. So thank you for watching. Uh, do give me your comments. And if you're subscribing, make sure you hit that little bell button next to the subscribe button because that is what will guarantee you or at least make more sure that you get an alert on the next video. So thanks for being here. I'm Marky Dragon. Take care.